Let me take you on a small autobiographical journey of me discovering three European comics that I really enjoyed and highly recommend. Welcome to For the Love of Comics. About two and a half years ago, friend of the channel Guido van der Zee from the Netherlands recommended to me in a comment on one of my shelf videos, recommended to me a couple of Dutch comics. I was traveling at the time, visiting family in the United States, so luckily I was able to immediately find one of those books, The Return of the Honey Buzzard by Amy de Jong, which I mentioned in my next Recent Reads video. This is the story of Simon, a man struggling on several levels. His bookstore, owned and run by his father and grandfather before him, is shutting down. And then Simon witnesses a suicide in the woods, which brings bubbling back a deep-rooted trauma from his childhood. Simon starts unraveling, but the bleakness of his story is mitigated. It's mitigated by the clean, expressive, yet raw-feeling art, by the dreamlike presentation of his breakdown, and by the sudden and unexpected connection Simon makes with a young student. The return of the honey buzzard balances tragedy and hope, the way Simon has to balance the past and the present. And I was thoroughly impressed by the author's cocktail of tropes and genres that we have perhaps seen before, but that still ends up as something fresh and surprising. The plot may or may not affect every reader the same way, but the style and the mood of this polished but raw, smooth but jagged comics novel immediately made me a fan of de Jong, someone I hadn't encountered before. That was almost three years ago. Around February of last year, another friend, Jimut Bahan, posted a panel from a comic on a Facebook comics group we both belong to. It was a little joke at the expense of all of us comics collectors in that group, but the artwork looked familiar to me, even though the person mentioned, Z. Drew, was not someone I knew. Turns out it was from a book written by Z. Drew, but drawn by... Amy de Jong, the writer-artist of The Return of the Honey Buzzard. Excited at finding another book by de Jong in English, I got myself a copy of Blossoms in Autumn, a collaboration between the Belgian Zidru and the Dutch de Jong. Even though this wasn't written by de Jong, Blossoms in Autumn immediately felt like a relative of Return of the Honey Buzzard. It tells the story of Ulysses, a retired moving man contemplating if his life is over and if he has wasted it, and of Mediterranea, a woman in her early 60s who used to be a calendar model in her younger days, who never married and has just lost her mother. These two characters in the autumn of their lives meet and fall for each other in a way that is both sweet and teenager romantic, but also adult, sad, weary, and made fragile by life. The text is minimal, but the dialogue echoes with wisdom, not cheesy fortune cookie platitudes, but lived-in and hard-won wisdom. But these characters still make mistakes and are still afraid. Although more down-to-earth than the sometimes dreamlike honey buzzard, Blossoms in Autumn still felt fairy tale like in places, with coincidences and connections propelling the plot as much as the characters did. But with the care taken to show this romance in old age realistically, with all the fears, scars and discomforts, as well as the tender but honest look at age and what it does to us both physically and emotionally, I found Zidru's writing and Amy de Jong's art, I found these to be a perfect combination in this sweet, sad, short but deep story. I was also excited to now add another comics creator, Z. Drew, to my ever-expanding list of people whose work to keep an eye out for. Unlike de Jong, relatively new to book-length comics, Z. Drew has apparently been around for quite a while, but it was still very hard for me to find anything by him translated into English, which is why I was thrilled to hear about the publication in December of 2021 of The Adoption in English, which I grabbed at the start of this year, 2022. The combination of the title and the art in the cover by Arnaud Monet, another name new to me, made me a 
bit nervously expect something quite familiar, a touching story of connection between generations and cultures, perhaps with some zany pratfalls and the thawing of a grumpy old man, the kind of crowd-pleasing tearjerker that Hollywood loves to bring out in live action and in animation. And to be honest, the start of the story did live up to that. Gabriel is not happy to find that he has become a grandfather, and that too because his son and daughter-in-law have adopted an orphan from Peru. His relationship with his own children is a source of pain, and his worries and concerns form the central story. But here is where Zidru again surprised me with his honest approach to what may feel like familiar elements. Gabriel's warming, although expected, takes place in small steps through real connections and moments that never feel false. And then the story changes into something wholly unexpected, something very different from whatever we thought it was going to be about. As disastrous as it could have been to veer off in the way the story seems to do, the adoption masterfully weaves it all together to make sense, to be connected, and to tell a story of learning and healing after all. The artwork here, with its more cartoony and colorful presentation, does as much work as the writing to pull off this magic trick, this subversion that does what it promised all along. All three of these books are united by themes of aging and regrets, meeting possibilities that still remain, and the struggle between them. It's not a foregone conclusion what will win, the old or the new, the experience or the unknown, and all three of these books are sad in the best way. They're sad because they see the beauty in everyday life and how easy it is to pass right by it. But all three do this without being static. They keep characters, situations, and most of all, time, they keep them moving. Part gentle meditations and part plotty coincidence and twist-filled tales, Return of the Honey Buzzard, Blossoms in Autumn, and The Adoption may have been discovered by me just following a chain of names, but ended up being a lovely little trilogy or triptych of human stories. I wanted to say something about one specific page in The Adoption, but I'll make a short separate video on that later and link that here when it's done. I'd love to know your stories of going from comic to comic to comic across creators like this. Leave them all in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this episode of For the Love of Comics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.